Well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Welcome you to this episode of The Chat, along with my friend and co-partner in education, Max Mastiano. Max, brother, how are you? Peace. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm pretty good. How are you, Dennis? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited because uh, we're doing this recording, and it's Sunday, the first day that we have daylight savings time. I'm so excited. I love this time of year. I, hey, I love too. it. Because I wake up with sunlight and I can come home and still have sunlight. Life is a good. Life is good. But anyway, here we are. And uh, again, it's been a while since we've done a broadcast because we've both been very busy. You've been on the road traveling. And uh I've been working on other things that uh, will come to fruition later this year. So uh, this is our first time back together for a little bit. And uh, yeah. so here we go. That's and right. For those of you watching this program for the first time, uh, tell you a little bit about us. Uh, you know, we, uh, our company's name is Guru Nation. We are a brand neutral educational company. Our whole purpose is to help salon professionals learn to master their skills and their understanding of the world of hair color because we believe that that's where the magic really is. And so we try, we believe in truth and disclosure. So we try to bring you the most factual, truthful, scientifically substantiated information that we possibly can so that you can make informed decisions. And uh, a lot of that information, we, uh, as they say on Law and Order, has been ripped from the headlines. <laughs> and the headlines for hairdressers, of course, is social media, Facebook, Instagram, kind of like the whole world that we live in. And um, as we always say, there's tons of information on social media. But not always is it factual. And so as a salon professional, you have to be prepared for that. You have to do your own due diligence. You have to investigate, especially when there's new ingredients introduced. We're going to talk about that today. Max is bringing us that story. When there's new ingredients that are introduced that are supposed to be revolutionary and uh, miracles, and um, you have to be prepared for that. Or when the marketing departments create a wonderful story about something that may or may not be factual. And, uh, you know, be cautious about fancy words. You know, it's like it's a word salad world that we live in. You know, I always say in California, we do not have plastic surgeons. We have body sculptors. You know, would you rather have your 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 adjustments done by a plastic surgeon or a body sculptor. And so you have to, <laughs> it's word salad. So anyway, Max, let's get right to it here. Uh, I recommend if you're watching this and you have a little notepad with you that you take down some notes, or at least if you find what we have to share with you today, interesting and intriguing, um, come back, rewatch the video, and take notes as we go through it. So, Max, tell me, what are we talking about today, my friend? Well, Dennis, there is a pretty popular hair care and hair color brand out there yes. that uh, has recently reformulated and restaged their color line, and uh, they are touting their new alkalizer package mm. is the biggest innovation in hair color in the last, I can't remember the exact number, but it was like 50 years or 75 years or, or something like that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So uh, what I thought would be really great is before we just uh, get right into it, we do a little bit of a review on what alkalizers are and what their function is in the oxidative hair coloring process. I think that's a great idea. I really do because, you know, I always uh, have believed that reviewing first gives you a foundation. And then we will go off on these tangents. People are able to kind of understand, you know, where they've, 
gone a little sideways. Yeah, and for sure. Yeah, yeah don't get me wrong. Uh, it's like technology does move forward. It does. But yeah. it, in our world, it moves at a slightly slower pace. And, and the only reason for that is because the, the medium, which is the hair, <laughs> hasn't really changed. Right. <laughs> You know, it's like I remember talking to a group uh, this weekend. Uh, I know on Friday we did a class and they said, well, why are they still using the same products they used when they colored hair before I was born? I said, well, maybe they got it right. Do you think maybe they got it kind of right? And now they're just tweaking it as they move along. Sure. Sure. So, I mean, you know, the first the first oxidative hair color was created in 1908 and it has. <laughs> Three yeah. things it had an alkalizer, it had dye precursors, and it needed developer. And, what do you know? <laughs> you know, a hundred years later, you have big companies with a lot of money behind them that that produce these hair coloring products. And don't you think, with all that money and research and development worldwide, if they could have find, or rather, if they could have found a more effective way to do it, right. they would have by now. But still, all oxidative hair colors have an alkalizer, have dye precursors, and require developer. Yeah, that is that is the way it is. You know, um, when you talk about those things, Max, you know, uh, here are really the three most commonly used alkamines. That's what they're called, alkamines or alkalizers that are used in the world of hair color today. Of course, you know, everybody's familiar with ammonia mm -hmm. and um, it is the most effective alkalizer. Sorry, folks, those of you who hate ammonia, I'm sorry. We know that ammonia is the most effective. We know that ammoniated colors give you more brightness in your result. We know that ammoniated colors you know, give you more richness in your color. And, and there's just a, a myriad of reasons why people who've been using ammoniated colors from the beginning, and then we moved into non-ammoniated product, there's a reason we still have a love for ammoniated hair color. And of right. course, it, it's gotten a bad rap. And I, I, like, I love it when people say, well, I don't want to use ammonia because ammonia is really bad for you. You know, it'll crystallize in your lungs and all these crazy stories and <laughs> max we make ammonia it's a it's a side I, it's a side product that the human yeah. body creates <laughs> i was just gonna say that you know you know like every time we go to the bathroom that's right one yes sir we're, we're pumping ammonia <laughs> out of ourselves you bet your life so you know you know we we just have to sometimes step back and go okay you know, so when someone says they're allergic to ammonia, uh, I, I don't think you can be allergic to ammonia, right. you know, <laughs> because your body produces it. There isn't a human or right. a, a creature on earth that doesn't produce ammonia. Okay, exactly. so it is what it is. Uh, the next one, of course, is MEA. And MEA has... Uh, you know, it was when it was introduced, it was brought in and a lot of people were, they praised it. Oh, my God, we got away from ammonia, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in chemistry, it's kind of a sticky wicket. Yeah. You know, because when you think about how you make MEA or monolethanolamine, you know, you, you take ammonia. I'm not going to do a flip chart. You take ammonia, which has uh, one nitrogen molecule holding three hydrogen molecules in suspension. And then you take one of those hydrogen molecules and you replace it with alcohol. And now you have ammonia. So ammonia is really a chemical cousin to, I mean, MEA is a chemical MEA. cousin to uh, ammonia. The, the difference even is... It's made from ammonia. You don't have to call it ammonia. That's it's right. Something, it's something new. It's new. You know, because in chemistry, sometimes when things are broken apart or things are added to them, 
something new is created. And so you can rename it. And, and that's the thing that, that happens. We, we get fooled a lot with um, situations where, because in our language, in hairdressing language, we only know ingredients. If, if you understand how hair color works, you're only aware of the ingredients because of what they tell you when they give you product knowledge. Sure. But, but in chemistry, if, if I know that I have the most effective alkalizer in the product and you tell me I can't use it anymore because nobody wants to buy my hair color, so I'm going to take what I'm currently using and I'm going to add a side chain to it. I'm going to tweak it slightly and then I can rename it. Right. And that's, that's what happened with MEA. Sure. And then, and then sure. number three, which is the precursor to what we're going to talk about today, is amino methylpropanol. Now, AMP, amino methylpropanol, and MEA are really very similar as far as the fact that they're much larger than ammonia is. So, you know, they're not, you know, ammonia will penetrate in the skin and also into the hair. That's why ammoniated colors do have a downside sometimes uh, is that people with really porous skin or dry skin they will the ammoniated colors will stain their skin whereas okay. non-ammoniated colors don't have a tendency to do that because the alkalizers the catalyzers if you will are too large to penetrate the skin yeah. or the hair I mean, you can you can even see on the visual ammonia is the smallest mea is a little bigger and amino methylpropanol is the biggest. Right. And the other thing I just want to point out is if you look at the chemical composition of monoethanolamine, it's got it's made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And AMP also has carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Not necessarily in the same proportion. Right. That's what changes. But they're well. That's what makes them different. Different. That's right. <laughs> and and uh, what I just like to say is what what I find very interesting about what this particular uh, brand has started doing when they're promoting their alkalizer, uh, which well, I'll just spill a little bit of the beans here, is basically a combination of ammonia. An amino methylpropanol or a cousin of amino methylpropanol, I should say. Yeah. They're really demonizing monoethanolamine, even though they're not yeah. really that dissimilar in chemical composition. Exactly. So everybody keep that in mind as we go a little deeper into the presentation. Yeah. I think a lot of companies who are using AMP now, they use that as a huge point of difference. Yep. When in fact, it is kind of like you say potato, I say potato. Exactly. You know? But that's the, that's remember, if I oranges, have a new product, I want you to buy it. Oranges right. and tangerines. There you go. Yeah. You know? All right. So let's take a look here, Max. Let me bring this up to a full screen. All right. Uh, and let's see if I can bring me down. I bet you can. Mm. Bet you I can. And now I'm going to go tiny size. All right. So here we're, we're going to talk about alkalizer function. And the first thing you guys need to know is every oxidative hair color must contain an alkalizer. And what do I mean by an oxidative hair color? It's basically any kind of hair color product, whether it's permanent or demi-permanent, that mixes with developer. If you're mixing A and B together, you're using an oxidative hair color. So what the alkalizer actually does in the tube or bottle of hair color is it keeps the solution, whether it's a gel or a cream or a liquid, it keeps it alkaline so that it protects the dyes because they have to live in an alkaline state so that they don't just oxidize spontaneously in the tube or bottle. The other function that the alkalizer serves has to do with the actual hair fiber itself. And when applied to the hair, it will swell the cuticle so that the 
colorants can actually penetrate into the cortex of the hair and do their thing. And the final function that the alkalizer serves is that it actually interacts or what we say catalyzes with the developer or activator or processing solution or color energizer, whatever you're calling it, which is basically right. hydrogen peroxide to bring about the release of oxygen and essentially start the oxidation process. So it has quite a few functions as far as what an alkalizer does. It plays a huge role in um, the color process, but these are the basic foundational purposes for using an alkalizer in your product. So um, catalyzation. You, yes. When you mix it with peroxide, let me bring myself up here. <laughs> I think I can get a little larger. There we go. Drag yourself over. Yeah. So when you mix it with peroxide, what happens is the peroxide begins to break down. That's the whole chemical process. That's what is called oxidation. The, the peroxide manifests that breaking down by the release of oxygen. So when I mix color and peroxide together, it is the marriage of an alkalizing agent in my color, which has maintained the integrity of the dye intermediate and the level of vo the volume of developer that I'm using, which will release oxygen, which does three things. Number one, it prepares a space for the artificial dye intermediates, so they're carried into the hair. It also helps to break down the structure of the hair so it can make a space. It delivers those dye intermediates to the cortex of the hair, the matrix, if you will, and it aids in the development of the dye molecule. That's what the peroxide does. It also has a side effect where it degrades some of the dye intermediates. It degrades some of the dye intermediates that are actually in the bowl so that sometimes those dye intermediates will never develop into a full color molecule. We call that a uh, non-effective pigment loss. Max, right. anything you want to add to that? Uh, just two, two other things. The other thing sure. that the developer does, which, you know, is very, you know, uh, vital. Well, it's not vital in the hair color process, but it is a side effect is that it also punches holes into the cuticle. Right. And, you know, your color has an alkalizer and your developer is acid. So when you mix an acid and an alkali together, you can see the little explosion emoji, but that is really what's happening. You're creating yeah. a reaction, you know, a chemical reaction. Where yes. all those chemicals are starting to party in the bowl. Right. And it is not sequential. No. It, it is, is all chaos. At the same time. It what do we like, call it? A square like dance for people on cocaine. Yes. <laughs> it, <clears throat> it is like releasing a small hurricane into the hair. And uh, that is the way the oxidation process works. And I think it's important for us to understand that there's a lot of things that are happening that are good. There are also some downsides to some of the things that are happening. Sure. All right. So as Max was saying, you know, oxygen is liberated, means it's freed from the hydrogen peroxide solution. It fractures or lightens the natural melanin in the hair. The oxygen carries the colorants into the cortex of the hair, the dye intermediates, if you will. Oxygen interacts with the colorants and initiates the coupling and development of the colorants into a larger, fully developed color molecule. Because that truly is where color molecules are. They are not in the bowl, or I should say they're not in the tube of color. Many people... We talk about uh, 
hair color as though the uh, color is in the tube, and it's really not. It's just basic chemicals in the tube. But after right. the oxidation process, what you create is a full color molecule. So That's right. So that that kind of uh, gives you an idea. Max, right. you want and, to add something? Yeah, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. All sure. of those different things are happening all at the same time. I just want to reiterate it. I know a yeah. lot of times we're, we're told, well, the first 20 minutes is lift and the second 20 minutes is deposit. And no, that's just not true. Not it's, true. Yeah. There's no, there's no way that that can be true. You can't relegate one part of this chemical reaction to do one thing. Right. Right. It would be great if we were able to do that, but we cannot. <clears throat> There's nope. only so much we can do. <clears throat> so, so here we have, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here we have, uh, you know, again, mixing color with developer initiates catalyzation. You see the arrow down, you see dark hair. It's starting to lighten because that release of oxygen is fracturing the melanin granules into the hair, basically breaking them up into smaller pieces or what we sometimes refer to in hair color as lifts. And at the same time, on the next slide. Whoop, hold on, I'm sorry. There we you go. You can see, again, color plus developer, catalyzation. You see those colorless, dye precursors and intermediate all existing separately and in a colorless state. And at the end of the process, they're connected, they're large, and they are the color that they're supposed to be or the color of that shade. Right. So you again, know, I... that, that lightning and development or deposit cycle is happening all at the same time. That's why it's called developer. It develops the entire process. You know, what I think might be good at this point is to talk about the words that we're using, because sometimes we use words that we understand, but sometimes, right. you know, our industry colleagues don't really understand what it means. So let's talk about the word catalyze, mm -hmm. catalyzation. It comes from the original word catalyst. And you guys can Google this. Catalyst is really something that moves something forward. It accelerates an action. And so when we talk about catalyzation, that means that the, alkal the alkalizer is creating that optimum environment so that it will accelerate the work of the developer. So that's what catalyzation means. It, it's it's moving something forward, okay? They go all the way back to the early English fighting the French when they had catapults. You expand, you send something forward. And that's really what a catalyzer or, or an alkalizer is. It's to create an environment and then allow the developer to do what the developer does, no matter what you mix it with. Developer will always do the same thing. It has right. no brain. Hair color has no yeah. brain. May I add one other thing real quick? Please. Before we, the other thing too to keep in mind you guys is you can apply color straight from the tube onto the hair and it's not gonna do that much on its own. The same with the developer by itself onto the hair. But where the magic really happens is when you bring the two together and they, catalyze or they interact and create that reaction and bring about development, oxidation and dye development. Yeah. Now you need to make a note that what we just explained to you is also something that has now been reworded and it's being used by a major manufacturer to describe one of their new color brands where they say it is kinetic hair color technology. So what we explained to you about the color process, about it is chaos, 
about things are banging against each other and hitting against each other. That is the very definition of kinetic. Kinetic means physically active, moving against things, being involved, physically involved. So the energy of motion. Exactly. So this is kinetic. All hair color is kinetic hair color technology. That's right. It doesn't, because... it doesn't make their hair color bad. It's just that they're using word salad to, right. to make them special. For any of you guys that still have your Milady's, you know, cosmetology book, you can actually look up in there. They talk about or refer to it as the kinetic theory of lightning. Yes, absolutely. Because that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. A lot of moving parts and pieces all going at the same time. Well, here's ammonia, Max. That's right. Let me bring this so, to full. Let me bring it to full screen and let me minimize Dennis. I'm gonna. No, I'm just gonna move myself over. Can yeah. I go here? Yeah. Can we yeah, I think say, I'll just uh, move over. Honey, I shrunk. The, honey, I shrunk the chemist. Like, yeah. <laughs> honey, I shrunk the hair colorist. I gotta reach up here and grab the molecule. <laughs> All right. So ammonia. So these are basically we're gonna go over each of the kind of key points of each alkalizer now. Ammonia is the smallest of the three alkalizers. It is considered a volatile. And what that basically means is it actually starts out as a liquid. And when it is catalyzed, it becomes a gas. Mm -hmm. So when you smell ammonia in the hair color process, although it doesn't smell great, it's actually a good thing because that means it's doing what it's supposed to do, and it's shifting from that liquid state into a gaseous state, and it is being released into the atmosphere. So it is slowly dissipating from the hair over the development time as well. It's still doing what it's got to do, but it also has a certain life expectancy. Right. Um, it is considered to be the most effective alkalizer for lightening the hair. You ask any cosmetic chemist, they will tell you ammonia is king when you're lightening the hair, period. Right. And the ammonia content in most uh, traditional permanent hair colors is approximately anywhere between about one and 4%, depending on the brand. Right, right. So there is no such thing as 20% ammonia in any hair color brand. No. Even even over the counter. <laughs> right. So stop it when you're talking about <laughs> your clients going to the store and buying hair color and all you have 20% ammonia, it's gonna melt your hair. That's not right. just simply not true. All right, so monolethanolamine, MEA. It's larger than ammonia. It is. Uh, I think the molecular weight of uh, MBA is around 60, 68, somewhere around there. You know, it's, it's not big, but it's larger than ammonia. So it's not going to penetrate the skin of the hair too much. And that's why non-ammoniated colors sometimes don't stain the hair like ammoniated colors do. Right. It is a liquid. So it is a, what we call a fixed alkali, means that it is stabilized. It continues along the road. It does not, it's not a volatile like ammonia. So many times in ammoniated hair colors, they have both ammonia and they have ethanolamine. They have them both. The reason is because as Max was saying, ammonia becomes gaseous. It starts to escape during the process. And we have to have something that's fixed to maintain that alkaline pH long enough to allow peroxide to do what it is supposed to do. It really doesn't smell. And one of the biggest drawbacks of using non-ammoniated hair color is because many people in our industry do a poor post-oxidation service, they do not remove all of the MEA from the hair. So they have residual color still remaining in that hair. And they didn't acidify the hair 
enough, as, as long as many times in order to, to shrink that cuticle and keep it closed. So as a client right. leaves, if they continually do that, down the, low, down the road, the hair can become dry and brittle. So it's very, very important if you're using a non-ammoniated hair color that you make sure your post-oxidation process is thorough. What do we mean by that? Yeah. That means you're going to rinse the hair until the, wa until the water runs clear. You're going to shampoo not once, but twice with an acid, the low acid pH shampoo. Then you're going to use a low acid pH conditioner. And then you're going to use an acidifying rinse, something around a pH of 3.5. If you, and I, there's, there's several of them out there in the marketplace. One of the things that I do and I teach in my classes is that once you rinse that first rinse, when you rinse the color from the hair, I acidify it at that point. It's not going to make it acid, but it's going to help to slow down that oxidation that, that may still be remaining in the hair. And it just, it's just an extra step that only takes a few minutes, but it will slow it down. And then now you can go ahead and do your two shampoos, your acidifying conditioner, and your acidifying rinse again. Remember, acid is always weaker than base, which is what we call alkaline. So it takes more steps many times in order to acidify a head of hair that's been setting at a pH of 9.0 to 10.0. It will catalyze with hydrogen peroxide to liberate oxygen for the lightening of natural melanin in the hair, but is less effective than ammonia and requires a higher concentration. Yes, here's what I'm gonna say to you, because I just made a non-ammoniated hair color a couple of years ago. If you're putting 8% MEA in that color, you're gonna dry that hair out. You're gonna destroy right. that hair. So it is about the way that you build your ingredient depth. Many people give MEA a bad rap because they say it doesn't come out of the hair. That's not true, okay? It is how you build it. There are certain ingredients that will make that whole story about MEA, MEA completely moot. But they use that <clears throat> to blame that product to build a foundation so they can talk about their ingredient, which of course they believe is far superior. If you formulate your color properly, you can use MEA in your color as an alkalizer and it will be fine. Now, one of the things about this, remember what Max shows you here, he was talking about ammonia, talking about MEA. Here's what you're gonna notice about non-ammoniated hair colors. Number one, your reds are not gonna be as bright as they are in the ammoniated group. Why? Because you don't have that explosion, that volatility that you would get with ammonia. So your reds will be cooler in shades. Your natural families may look a little cooler. That's not bad. That just means mm -hmm. that's what's happening when you're using a non-ammoniated hair color. So yeah. that is monolethanolamine. And uh, what we should probably look at is the final guy here, Max, and I'm going to have to move me over again. I'll <laughs> go right there. I'm getting in the way today, Max. I'm sorry. You're perfect, Dennis. So finally, we have uh, amino methyl propanol, and this is the large. <laughs> it's a mouthful, baby. Uh, it's the largest of the three alkalizers. It's a liquid, just like MEA. No smell, just like MEA. Non-volatile, just like MEA. And it is essentially the least effective alkalizer for bringing about lightening of the hair which right. is typically why it's not used a lot in permanent hair color. You see amino methylpropanol used in some demi-permanent hair colors as the mm -hmm. alkalizer. Uh, another just sort of side note about uh, amino methylpropanol is it's also the most expensive of the three alkalizers. So that's why it's not really all that commonly used right now. Right. Right. All right. So that is all of our, our alkaline, all of our alkalizer our, story. Our back. This is our backstory. Our backstory. So, so, 
Let's, uh, I can put these guys off. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh. I got to move me. Oh, let me move yeah. myself. Oh, oh, oh. oh I got to grow a little bit. Help me grow. There you go. And you I'll go over here. How's there that? There you go. Science, everybody, right there. Bum, I'm back. So now, so now we're back. So this particular company has created the newest innovation in alkalizers using a, an AMP derivative or a cousin of AMP. Mm -hmm. combined with ammonia. So we're going to talk about the, the key claims that they're basically putting out into the field, which do make it sound really good. But now that you have all gotten a little science lesson, you know, we want to see essentially where this goes and knowing now what you know, what these statements would truly mean. So let's talk about the, the first one, which is they say that their uh, proprietary alkalizer blends maintain lift while protecting keratin bonds deep within the cortex. Okay, so it's an alkalizer. It really is not what affects keratin bonds anyway. Right. The keratin bonds are affected by the peroxide, the developer. Right. That's what breaks down the structure. Uh, if you're going to lighten hair, you have to break down the structure of the hair because you have to make a space for the dye intermediates. That's right. So one could interpret that it may protect the keratin because it doesn't affect the keratin. Uh, but that that's really a stretch. Well, and and let's you know, and it's an it's an alchemy. It is. Right. It's an alchemy with a pH of what ten point six, I think. Right, Max? Yeah, it's it's high. You know. Yeah. Um, and let me just repeat this again: maintains lift while protecting keratin bonds deep within the cortex. Well, let's just take the first part of that statement. Alkalizers maintain lift. Well, that's all that's alkalizers, you guys. Yes, yes. Not just not just one brand. Yes. And no alkalizer on its own is going to damage keratin. No. So it's it's a word salad word play, but it mm -hmm. sounds really good. Right. You know? So here's the next one. This proprietary alkalizer blend provides incredible vibrancy and color longevity, even on the most difficult to maintain vibrant red shade. Okay, so vibrancy and longevity are created in a hair color. One, most importantly, by the dye intermediates. Longevity is created based upon maximum dye development, which is really coming from the developer. So it really doesn't have anything to do with long, creating longevity and creating vibrancy. There, an alkalizer has nothing to do with that. That's not its right. role. Right. And it really is the combination of you know, the dyes in that tube and what volume of developer that will give you incredible vibrancy and color longevity. Right. Because if you mix something with a really high developer, remember, like we, we talked about earlier, one of the side effects of developer is what we call non-effective non effectment non effective pigment <laughs> loss, which is basically, you know, the more lift you put into a formula, the less deposit you're going to get at the end of the day. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so truly, 
you know, vibrancy is a result of, as Max said, the developer, a marriage of the developer, the the dye intermediates, and what the hair contributes. That's vibrancy and longevity. Yeah. And the Nothing canvas. to do with the alkalizer. Yeah. That's right. Um, third key claim for the proprietary uh, alkalizer blend creates a faster chemical reaction that enhances penetration of the color into the hair shaft for exceptional color deposition and consistent 100% gray coverage. Okay, so Max, do they say how long their processing time is? Uh, between 30 and 45 minutes, like a <laughs> traditional permanent hair color. <laughs> and again, you know, I just want to say that this statement could apply to all permanent hair <laughs> color brands, but it's yeah. not just the alkalizer. Again, this is, that's like saying, th this is like such a blanket statement to me. Because again, it's the canvas, the hair. Right, right. The color you select, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the formula. The formula <laughs> and the developer. Uh, you yes. know, that's like saying you get 100% gray coverage every time, you know. Well, if you're using a level 10 and 40 volume on 100% white hair, I'm pretty hard pressed to say you're probably not going to get what we would perceive as coverage. Right. I'd so lay again, money on that. Yeah. So again, it's, it, it's a little blurry. Yeah. It sounds good on paper, but there's so much more to it. Right. Right. And finally, we're back, we're back to uh, that this particular proprietary alkalizer blend does not have the mechanism to damage the keratin structure. And again, that applies to all alkalizers. Yeah. So yeah, I would say on number four, they are spot on. Right. That is true. <laughs> and so is MEA. And so is AMP by ammonia. Itself, and so is ammonia. Ammonia. And yes, all of the different, you know, combinations of it. And and you guys, the other the other thing to keep in mind here too is that this particular company isn't the first to combine two different alkalizers. There's right. a lot out there on the market. Right. And it's done to build a marketing story. Yes. To fit, you know, that product brand. Because at the end of the day, hair color manufacturers, and we love them, and we both work for them. Yeah. But they want to sell more hair color. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with having that as your goal. Yeah. Uh, but because you, those of you watching this, are consumers of professional products. That's right. You use them in your salon like we do. It is most important that we be aware and we don't go down that rabbit hole of stories that, again, they sound amazing. You know, when you listen to the people who present for this company, oh, my goodness gracious, you know, you see unicorns and sunflowers and everything. Rain, I mean, got, rainbow. Rainbow sparkles oh, and cupcakes. The cupcakes. word salad is amazing. Uh, but it's just hair color. Right. It's just hair color. Remember, hair color is over 100 years old. Yep. It hasn't really I'm, changed in this whole time. They've absolutely. improved some enhancements, but that's exactly what they are. They're enhancements. Right. Additional conditioners. Some different chelators. Mm -hmm. you know, things to make the, the eliminate odor, etc. But it's still that same basic mechanism to, you know, lighten and color hair has not changed. No, no. And it won't change until the biology changes. <laughs> yeah. On, on or, the we humans, get, uh, on the or we species. get the species. The, the Jetson's helmet that used to come down on Jane Jetson. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then, you know, wow. but other than that, here we are, everyone. Yeah. So look, I, I hope you've learned something today. If you found these nuggets, uh, hopefully we've delivered a couple of nuggets. We definitely delivered a lot of information today. Uh, we gave a, an, a class on alkalizing. So that, that's, right. that's pretty pretty cool. We feel good about that. If you find this beneficial and you and you think it's worthwhile, recommend it to your friends. If you're watching us on YouTube, this is where we broadcast this program as well as to other social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching us on YouTube. Uh, we, uh, we invite you, if you've not subscribed, you can subscribe right down here just below our screen. And that way you'll get notification the next time one of our videos drops. Uh, you can also find Max and I on social media. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. We invite you to uh, go to our Facebook page, Guru Nation. Um, we invite you to join our, our Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private, non-branded group. Uh, all you have to do is search it out, ask for admission, and we'll get you inserted in there. And you know, watch for some of our upcoming programs. Uh, you might want to check out our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Uh, if you have a hard time logging on because you didn't clean your cookies or your cache on your phone or your computer, you can go to my Instagram page at Real Captain Color. You can click on the link tree link and it will take you directly to our website. Um, <clears throat> we are excited to announce that summer school Hair Color School for Summer uh, is ready for registration. Uh, first classes begin on June the 5th. And so if you're interested in coming and spending 30 days over a period of 30 days, four different sessions with us includes homework, uh, interaction. It's just a really great experience. Great. We invite you to come and join us where we go deep inside hair chemistry, hair color science, color theory, physics, all of those things that you need to be totally grounded in the world of hair color. So uh, that's pretty much everything for today. We thank you all for watching us. And uh, if you like the chat, tell your friends about the chat. Come and see us again. Um, so Max, anything you want to say before we close off? I was just going to say, if you liked what you learned today, this is just a taste of what we talk about in four four hour sessions over a month's time in hair color school. If you right. wanna be immersed into the science and chemistry and physics of not only just hair color, but hair structure and hair color composition, then that class is for you. So seating's limited, so don't miss out. All right, everybody, listen, thank you all so much. Enjoy your first week of daylight saving. And as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you? I am out as well. See you guys later. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.